Right, so this is Tincan, and today we are going to talk about some tips and tricks for new players. Basically in this session I just want to talk about the different systems that you find in the ship and just talk a little bit about what is essential and what you can sort of do about. So uh, we'll basically start with the, the most important stuff, which is the life support system. And usually the first thing that you're going to want to do is just to switch these out. So you'll notice that we've just started. I am in sandbox mode, but it starts in the exact same place as any of the other games. And you will see that the oxygen bottle has already used most of its oxygen. That is the starting state. So it is usually the first thing that you want to switch out. Um, and the same thing goes for the CO2 bottle. So for this, you actually want to switch out the bottle and you want to clean out the filter as well. So that's done. Right, uh, with that out of the way, um, this actually brings us to what the two most important systems are. And I think if you look around the ship and you look at all the systems, you can basically classify them into three different categories. So the first one would be essential systems that you really can't have switched off for more than uh, minutes or so at a time. I'm not sure exactly how long you can keep this switched off, but it doesn't take long before you're going to start feeling the effects of either not having oxygen or getting carbon dioxide poisoning if this system is not working. Uh, and you basically need to try and keep this switched on all the time uh, because yeah, you will die quite quickly if these aren't working. Um, so these are the only two systems that are like that. Everything else in the ship, you can get away with having it off at least some of the time. Um, for some of the systems and some of the systems, you can actually get away with having it switched off completely. Um, and I think we'll just start with uh, sort of what I would call the second category. So systems that you can get away with having it switched off uh, some of the time, uh, but it depends on the circumstances. So the one is the temperature management system up here, uh, which there are certain circumstances under which you can have this switched off, but it's not a system that you can strip for parts because you need to use it too often to do that. And uh, the same is true for the man main generator. So because this powers everything else, you do have batteries in some of the systems and you can run them off that for a short period of time, but of course you you can't afford to strip down the system completely because you will need it uh, most of the time. And the final system that sits in this category where you uh, may want to disable it from time to time. So you will see that these have already been converted. So I can switch off this system now. And if I look at how much we have left in the oxygen bottle, most of it's still there. So what's important about this is that the this recycling system actually works a lot faster in terms of recycling uh, CO2 back into oxygen than the life support system actually uses. And this is why you can get away with have, having this switched off when you're not using it. And we'll talk about this with a couple of systems which actually don't need the backup battery in here. I tend to um, try and take batteries out of systems that don't absolutely need them because um, otherwise what's going to happen if the power does go out for whatever reason, the system will uh, take battery power in, in cases where it really doesn't need to do that. And we'll get shortly to all the systems that we can remove the backup power from. Systems that you want backup power for, well, obviously these two, as we spoke about, and then uh, usually this one as well. It's a good idea to have a backup battery in here. Not absolutely essential. As I said, there are some situations where you don't need the temperature regulation to be on, uh, but that's probably the other one that you're going to want to use it for. Right, so with all of these systems, so we know essential systems, we know systems that are essential most of the time. Let's talk about the ones that you can get rid of uh, in certain circumstances. And I'll start with the ones that you probably don't want to strip down because they are useful, but in really dire situations, you can get away with it. And then we'll get to the really redundant systems where you can just get rid of it uh, if you needed to. So first one, the gravity generator. This is something that, you know, it's not essential to, uh, you know, as sort of a life support system, you can definitely live without it. Uh, but there's two things that's important in terms of when the gravity goes out. The first one is that all these handles that you see around the ship, you basically need to use them to move around. Uh, move around. And the problem with that is if your hand is grabbing onto something, uh, like I've got my left hand on it right now, to move around, that basically means you've only got one hand free. So if you need to move around the ship and carry things around, which you need to do a lot of the time when you're in crisis mode, uh, basically it means you're only going to have one hand, that's a big issue. So this is not something that you really want disabled permanently if you can avoid it. Um, then some of the other systems, so I would say the repair station, while it's useful, uh, 
there, you can get away with not using this a lot of the time. And something that's very important to realize is if you scrap something, the parts that you get from scrapping, say, a completely functional system uh, is actually less than what you would need to repair that same component. So it's not, it's not actually a great idea to scrap parts if you can avoid it. You, ri you rather want to take redundant parts from other systems and switch them out. Once you start running out of those and you have a critical part that you absolutely have to uh, replace and there's no redundant part to replace it with, that is where you want to go back and basically find out, okay, what else is there that I can scrap? So mostly you can get away with having the system switched off. Uh, I would say the same for the battery charger. This is something that I usually switch off from the start and I only switch it on when I use it. The reason is that it's not that the battery charger isn't useful, it is extremely useful, but it is, uh, it's quite difficult to use it. There's a lot of situations where it doesn't make sense to charge the battery. Um, it uses a lot of power, so you usually uh, you would lose gravity at the same time. And this is one of the reasons why you just want to get rid of the batteries and other systems. So the repair um, station, for example, this is one system where you can take the spare battery out. If you really need to use it in, in a pinch, you can put it back in. Um, but this is one of those systems that you probably want to get rid of it. So, uh, right, let's see what we have not covered yet. So the, the main computer is another one. So this is an interesting one because it is useful. Uh, if any other system breaks, then the main computer will allow you when you check on the screen. So if I flip this to the error list, if there's an error on here, the main computer will allow me to see what that is and not just give me a code. If you don't have the main computer switched on, it basically means that you're going to need to go to the manual and you're going to have to check the error codes at the, um, at the back to see, or actually you can check it in here as well to see what that means. So that's a, you know, it's just going to take a little bit of time to do that. It's faster to have this switched on. Uh, so there's two ways that you can think about the system. The one is that definitely there are components in here that you can get rid of and it will still work perfect, perfectly fine. So if I just switch this off, if I get rid of these warning lights, if I, uh, for example, take out the spare battery, because this is not a critical system that you're going to need when the power fails, most of the time at least. Uh, if I take out one of these processors, it can still function perfectly fine without any of these things. I can even you know, take out the data connector in the screen if I wanted to. Um, and let's just switch this back on, see if everything still works as it should. But the thing is with this is that uh, if the main computer is switched on, it'll still allow you to see errors on other screens. The display that you're getting from the main computer isn't actually that useful because it's only telling you which systems are not currently switched on and you know which systems are not switched on because you switch them off. And, uh, you know, it's only six systems. So it's really not that difficult to keep track of. So you could easily take out the CRT monitor as well and you know, with everything that I've removed, this system still works perfectly fine. Yes, I'm not gonna get critical errors if something goes wrong with this particular system, but if something does go wrong, it can't kill me anyway. So it's not really something that you need to worry about too much. Now we're gonna get to the really redundant system, stuff that you really don't need to use. And I'm gonna start with, uh, with something that could be useful in some cases. So we see there's a dirty filter here, we'll, we'll clear it out. This system just remains air pressure. and. Honestly, you can go through, uh, okay, let's see, I think this filter is getting dirty as well. Actually, before I talk about this, I'm gonna to need to switch out these bottles again. So we're just gonna do that. There we go. Let's switch this on so that when I switch the other bottle, we can, uh, we can actually just get these recycled again. So when you're new to the game, this is the reason why you probably don't want to remove all of these warning lights and buzzers and stuff because uh, you it just makes it a little bit easier for you to know what's actually wrong. It is true that you can get rid of some of these warning lights and I know that some people do suggest doing that. The reality is it doesn't actually give you that many parts to repair stuff with. If you strip out a bunch of different warning lights, you can get, uh, you can get to repair some stuff. But it's still useful to be able to see even when the master caution light is on because even though it isn't something that will necessarily kill you, it could be a problem later on. You might not notice if it's, if it's not on. Anyway, back to the redundant system. So for this one, 
Um, this just maintains the uh, air pressure and you can check it over here as well. In fact, you can check everything, almost everything that will be a serious problem on this display panel over here. The pressure is hardly ever a problem. You can keep this system switched off quite safely. So I'm going to switch it off and I'm just going to continue talking and it will not become a problem because really there's very few scenarios in which air pressure really becomes a problem. And if the pressure does become too high in the ship, uh, this is probably not very realistic, but you can just open up the, um, the airlock and let some of the air out and that will release some of that pressure. Now, I think, I've never been in this situation before, I think that what that will eventually mean is if you're not putting nitrogen into the air, you'll keep getting higher concentrations of oxygen. That can become a problem too, but again, chances that that is what's going to kill you is very, very low. And if you ever get to that problem, you can always just quickly re-enable the system and sort of sort things out. So what this means is you basically now have a drawer full of spare parts and definitely, again, things such as this battery is another. So we've got four spare batteries here already. Okay, moving on. So now the stuff that you really don't need. The first thing you want to do after you've switched out the oxygen and the CO2 is switch off the main lights. You absolutely do not need this. As you can see, there are backup lights. Um, so what this means is you've got another system of spare parts that you can use. And uh, in certain situations, so I do think the backup lights are useful. I do like to keep them on most of the time, but um, you really don't need the battery in this because again, it's one of those things that if things go wrong, you don't want a battery to be draining just because uh, you're having the backup lights on. If the lights are off, you can just use your flashlight. Now, of course, this does run out, but it recharges again. So even though it's a little bit more inconvenient in some cases, you really don't need to have the backup lights on in all situations. Uh, you can work without it. But generally, I do keep the system functional, at least at the start. It's something that later on you can start uh, disabling. And I think that is pretty much everything. Let me just see, did I miss any of the batteries and the systems? We did take it out for the repair system as well. And we disable the charger yeah so that's basically all the different systems then um, that you may want to uh, disable in certain situations and strip the parts uh, i will do a separate video where we can talk about specific events and how you deal with those events as they come up